A deadly crash on Route 251 in Victor, and it's the Park Avenue Festival, plus lots more, next on News 8. The world is ready. On September 15th, the 25 greatest days of TV viewing will begin with TV 8 Summer Olympics. Followed on October 15th by the World Series. Are you ready? Cable TV's fall lineup hasn't been affected by the writer's strike. While you're watching the Olympics, stock up on cable's fall programs with a cable and VCR connection from Greater Rochester Cable Vision. Watch TV 8 for the 25 greatest days of TV viewing. There. They're here. They're TV 80s. All summer long, guys and gals are slipping into the finest styles to be seen for miles. Plus, wear your TV 80 to win premium prizes and discover dazzling discounts. From WROC TV 8 and Rochester's own champion products come TV 80s. Available exclusively at Rochester area JC Penny locations. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Get them while it's hot. Feeling hot, hot, hot. When you Now, what's going on? You're fixing up the playground. For the kids. Hey, that's a big job. Show them you can do it. You Crush, a bold new look, a bold taste, and the juice of real crushed fruit. Don't just quench it, crush it. Give it your best shot. Give it all you got. Don't just quench it, crush it. Don't just quench it, crush it. WROC TV 8, Rochester. From Rochester's first television station, this is News 8. A fatal crash in Victor. Good evening, I'm Brad Couples. Steve Otteson has the weekend off. One man is dead, a woman injured after a dump truck crashed into a car this morning on Route 251 in Victor. Ontario County Sheriff's deputies telling News 8 that the driver of the truck, Joseph Welch of Rochester, crossed the yellow line crashing head-on into a car. The car's driver was pronounced dead at the scene. A female passenger is in guarded condition at Strong Memorial Hospital. Names are not being released pending notification of family and an investigation is continuing. A disabled Rochester woman who battled bureaucratic red tape that prevented her from taking time off from her job has won the right to compete against other handicapped athletes in an international competition this fall. Robin DeWind has our story. We have within our midst, uh, and I'm going to ask her to stand, a, a young lady who demonstrates what America is about. About love, about courage, about overcoming adversity. At the age of 19, Karen Ann Cook lost her leg when a drunk driver crashed into a store where she was working. Since then, she's turned her handicap into an advantage, turning to athletics. Cook was chosen over thousands of athletes to compete in the shot put and discus events in the 8th annual Paralympic Games in Seoul, Korea. They'll be held just two weeks after the Olympic Games this fall. I'll be competing against the amputee athletes from all around the world in the A2 class, which is a uh, single above the knee amputee class in the women's. But the road to the Paralympics has been long and hard for Cook. Officials at the Veterans Administration here in Rochester, where she works, told her she could not have paid time off to compete, even though servicemen are allowed to take time off with pay. Cook turned to one of our local senators for help. Well, I just think it was a terrible thing for someone who's overcome so much, who works for the Veterans Administration, counseling disabled, who's one of our country's best, uh, and then find a situation where uh, red tape prevents her from, from going. Cook has been named special representative for the Administrator General, and although she leaves for Seoul as a representative of disabled athletes across America, she says she's not at a disadvantage. Her handicap is only an inconvenience. As an amputee group, we don't consider ourselves disabled. We consider it just an inconvenience of having a disability, but we don't let it stand in our way of accomplishing our goals of bringing home the gold. Robin DeWind, News 8. The annual Park Avenue Festival is underway. The two-day traditional event began this morning, and for a while the sky was shaking and showers threatened to be uncooperative. But Mother Nature came through, and the artists and craftspeople who brought their stuff out were greeted by good-sized crowds, all looking for that special something just to make the home a little sweeter. 
The festival will operate again tomorrow from 10 until 6. It is time to start digging through all your old lottery tickets once again. Albany says it's launching an all-out aggressive campaign, trying to find people who might be millionaires but don't know it. More than $10 million in unclaimed grand prizes is just sitting around waiting to be claimed. Included in that pile of cash, one prize worth $6 million. By the way, tonight's lotto drawing is worth $8 million. You should be able to count on the word of a reporter to keep your name confidential if that's what was promised. The state shield law is designed to ensure that's what happens, but sometimes there's legal maneuvering aimed at forcing disclosure anyway. New York City Assemblyman Stephen Sanders says state and assembly negotiators have pretty much reached agreement on a bill strengthening the shield law to protect sources in both civil and criminal cases. Homicide investigators say they have identified a prime suspect in the killing of one man and the wounding of another at a downtown motel early yesterday. A man believed to be from New York City, Evan Brown, was killed by a single gunshot to the head at the downtown motor lodge on South Avenue. The wounded man, also from New York City, was treated and released at Strong. Police sources indicate the shooting may have stemmed from a drug deal gone sour. Investigators have not released the name of the man that they are seeking. Coming up, a new job for the local state police commander, and somebody finally figures out how to make money off the rat race. Gabriel A. Chrysler Plum is out to be your high volume, low overhead, no frills dealer. If you drive out to Gabrielli's in Avon, you're going to save a tremendous amount of money. Here's some examples. We have these five Horizons, all on sale for $62.95, including your eBay plus tax and license fees. They have AM FM stereo, a deluxe cloth interior, and power steering and power brakes. These cars are all on sale. Come on down and pick your color. Just pick up the phone and call us at 889-1164. Or buddy, just come on down. Max Pies will open special hours tomorrow, noon till 5, for our August carpet sale. This is a store-wide sale. With up to 70% off the largest carpet inventory in the East. Including DuPont certified Stainmaster carpets. $39 carpets on sale for only $8.99. With six months to pay, interest-free. We'll even install your carpet at no extra charge. Remnants are reduced another 10% off already low prices. That's tomorrow, noon till 5 only at Max Pies. I'm pretty new here at Continental Child Care Center, but I've already got some goals. First, I'm going to sit up by myself. Soon I'll be crawling. I'm going to get that camera. Next, I'm going to feed myself, do some sliding down, and some bouncing around, but not right after eating. I'll do some digging and build a few things, including some new friendships. Then I'll retire. What a life at the Continental Child Care Center across from Lincoln Tower downtown. Something really new is in the works at the Huggies Diaper Factory. They're rolling out the driest Huggies ever. Kleenex Huggies Super Trim Diapers with the new Dry Touch system. Only Huggies Super Trim has a unique blue middle layer that funnels wetness into the padding then helps stop it from leaking back. Now, boys and girls stay drier than ever. Huggies' new Dry Touch system. It's producing the happiest smiles ever. News 8 has learned that the area's state police commander, Major John Foligno, is being transferred to Albany. He will become a staff inspector at the department's headquarters. His replacement is going to be Salvatore Valvo, currently a captain with Troop G. Valvo is being promoted to major. Foligno is credited with strengthening the working relationship between the state police and local law enforcement agencies in this area. Two people remain hospitalized and several have been charged in the wake of that accident yesterday on Dake Street. It happened shortly after two when a stolen blazer driven by a 15-year-old went out of control and slammed into the Genesee Settlement House day camp. Fifteen people were injured. Only Angel Rios, a pedestrian, and four-year-old Rienda Lennon remain hospitalized. Both of them are in satisfactory condition. Police haven't released the name of the driver because of his age. A coalition of Rochester labor unions, church groups, and social justice organizations is urging local consumers to boycott California grapes. Local supporters passed leaflets out this morning at two local grocery stores, hoping to warn shoppers about the dangerous pesticides they say are now being used on like the grapes. We would like the local supermarkets to be more cautious in selling grapes that come from California. And we would like people 
who are in the habit of buying California grapes to boycott them, not to buy them. The United Farm Workers have joined in this boycott, citing dangerous working conditions for farm workers. Fashion trends from years past were on display in Midtown Plaza today. The Traveling Museum Division of Encyclopedia Britannica brought its Century of Fashion exhibit to Midtown, drawing some oohs and ahs from mall shoppers. A dozen showcases of recreated fashions draped the mannequins detailing fashion trends from the Civil War to the mid-60s. Well, for those of you caught up in the rat race, this latest Japanese game fad may not be for you. It's called the Big Woos. It's a giant walk-through maze designed for people. You could say it's a great chance to find out how a rat feels as he hunts for the big cheese. And we have more from David Burrington. A Japanese firm has spent $10 million on this wooze, as it's called. It's a labyrinth of seven-foot-high corridors. The Japanese consider it a great challenge to the mind and good exercise to boot. I lost my friend walking along here. <laughs> Four, five, six. Yay! Such mazes are a huge success in Japan. More than 100 are in operation. Promoters are hopeful it'll catch on here. American people like the very new things, like uh, this kind of amusement park. No, we're not. <laughs> the fastest time anyone has gotten through a maze like this is three and a half minutes. It's pretty hard. Are you lost? Yeah. But it's taken some people five hours to find their way out. Not again. I'm still looking at the same tower. One Air Force colonel, who considers himself a pretty good navigator, had a terrible time. I think you got to go back out to the right. There are emergency exits for people who find the frustration too great. I know how to get out. <laughs> if this prototype is a success, the Japanese say they'll build 60 more around the country. Oh, here we are again. Not there. No, no, no. David Burrington, NBC News, Vacaville, California. And coming up, we'll have the weather with Dave Coombs. What a way to keep cool this summer. Water safari at Enchanted Forest. It's fast, it's cool, it's wild, it's hot. Enchanted Forest, water safari, where the fun never stops. Water Safari at Enchanted Forest. 16 all-new water rides this year. That means more fun, more thrills, more good times than ever before. Don't miss New York State's largest water fun park. Enchanted Forest, Water Safari, where the fun never stops. Il Parmigiana, Sandwich Italiana, Burger King's done it. Just as I would. Red and milk patty. Vegetable oil. So much fun for The new Hyundai Excel GS is a great car for a quiet afternoon drive. There's a standard stereo sound system for people who appreciate fine music. The special alloy wheels will elicit the praise of the most critical aficionado. Nice wheel. And with front wheel drive and contoured sports seats, you can ride in comfort while enjoying the scenery. In fact, the Hyundai Excel is the perfect car to take for a quiet picnic on the beach. Hyundai, cars that make sense. When I was a kid, I loved to wear bandages just to get attention. But now, I wear Band-Aid Brand Clear, so people notice me, not my bandage. Only Johnson & Johnson makes Band-Aid Brand Clear, clearly the best-looking bandage ever. Just a sprinkle. The day helps keep odor away. And now, with new unscented, Shower to Shower has four ways to help you feel drier and fresher between showers. Have your eyes your sprinkle today. We had some lightning rattling around last night. We had some showers today. What's in store, Dave? Gomes? We did indeed, Brad. Lightning, you know, a golfer, Lee Trevino, once said that uh, the best way to deal with lightning is maybe to hold up a one iron because not even God can hit a one iron. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it personally. Last night's lightning storm was fun to look at, but residents in Pittsburgh and Penfield suffered a power outage. The storm disrupting service for about 2,400 RG&E customers from approximately 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Right now in Rochester, the almanac shows us that uh, sunrise is going to be about 6.07 tomorrow and uh, sunset tonight will be about 8.26 in the SUNY 
Rockport Almanac. Uh, the average and record temps for this date throughout history show today's conditions just about normal for early August. Now if we can uh, check in now with the uh, Radar O'Reilly map, it'll give us a closer look at the uh, current conditions. You can ignore uh, that uh, false red-green uh, blip. Apparently, we're not receiving the radar map right now, but we'll get back to that in just a moment. Uh, in the uh, national map, can we get to the national map right now? Um, national map uh, not coming up either. And uh, what we'll do now is uh, check on the... Uh, there's the national map. We have it finally. Okay, uh, generally hot temperatures all across the nation, especially dangerous heat levels out in Arizona, also around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex in southern Oklahoma and into Arkansas, that state's Hot Springs National Park, living up to its nickname today. And as we check into the boating conditions now, out on the lake for tonight and tomorrow around Rochester on Lake Ontario, uh, we see that uh, the boating should be good with uh, waves about uh, two feet or less. And uh, there is the marine forecast now as we look at it. The uh, winds tomorrow will be uh, about 5 to 15 knots. And uh, finally, now we get to the forecast for tomorrow. Continued relief from the humid conditions as a weak upper air disturbance is expected to move through the area tonight. That front will bring warm temperatures and drier air, thank goodness. Uh, high tomorrow, a pleasant 85 or so tonight. It will be kind of cloudy with the lows around 65. So we're going to have some uh, nicer weather coming to the area and drier, drier conditions, which is the relief from all of that humidity we've been getting, Brad. That's the thing that's been bothering most people is that's the right. humidity. And, it, and they say it's not the heat, it's the humidity, but... That's no. right. Never let them see you sweat, right? Is that what they say? 100 <laughs> degrees, I remember, in Batavia this week, uh, standing in front of the courthouse, and that was not a lot of fun. Next, Jim Gaiman has sports, including the latest on the pennant race, when News 8 returns. A great summer and a new Chevy just go together. So get together with your Monroe County Chevy dealer. Summer sale discounts save you $300 to $2650 on S10 pickups, $500 to $1700 on full size pickups with cash back and option savings. Go for it. There are hundreds of new Chevy cars and trucks. So drive through, drive up, drive to your Monroe County Chevy dealer. There's a builder who still takes pride in the detail of his craft. Lake Breeze Estates, developer and builder, has homes and lots in the Bridal Path subdivision waiting for your inspection. Homes that fit family needs and lifestyles. Cedar siding, large rooms, cathedral ceilings, fireplaces, skylights, and more. Add to the contemporary or traditional designs you choose. For country living convenient to shopping centers and the expressway, stop by Bridal Path off Scribner Road in beautiful Penfield. I'm in my car listening to my stereo at least 10 times more than my home stereo, so I finally decided to put my money where my ears are, right here in the car. I have an awesome system. Digital tuner, cassette deck, totally state-of-the-art. Graphic equalizer to get just the sound I want, then 400 watts of power pumping the finest set of audiophile speakers you ever heard. Plus, I got this system for a lot less than you'd think. Take one guess where. They're hot. They're here. They're TVATs. All summer long, guys and gals are slipping into the finest styles to be seen for miles. Plus, wear your TVAT to win premium prizes and discover dazzling discounts. From WROC TV8 and Rochester's own champion products come TVATs. Available exclusively at Rochester area J.C. Penny locations. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Get them while it's hot. Feeling hot, hot, hot. And Jim Gaiman is here with sports. Sports? We're talking about the baseball pennant races? Baseball's my favorite. I'd make a lousy sports guy, though, because I don't like hockey, I don't like basketball, I don't like tennis, I don't like golf. You would make a lousy sports catcher. You anyway, don't. Detroit is pulling away from the Red Sox in the American League East. The Tigers took their fourth straight from Boston this afternoon, 4-2, to two, and now have a four-game lead. We're scoreless in the third. Detroit's Dave Bergman belts a double down the left field line. Luis Salazar scores, and the Tigers are on top, one to nothing. To the fifth, and again, it's Bergman. This time, he singles to the left center field gap. Pat Sheridan comes home from third, and Detroit has a 2-0 lead. And now in the sixth, Matt Noakes tags West Gardner's pitch deep to right. It's gone his 13th of the year. 
Darrell Evans was along for the ride. 4-0 Tigers. Boston saved a little face in the seventh with Mike Greenwell on third. Todd Benzinger rips the ball to the upper deck and right. However, that wasn't enough. Detroit over the Red Sox, 4-2. Elsewhere in the American League, Jamie Quirk, Kurt Stilwell, Danny Tartable, and George Brett each homered as the Royals ripped Toronto 11-1, and Oakland leads Seattle 4-1. That game's in the sixth inning. Over in the National League, Montreal has a one-run lead over St. Louis in the ninth, and the Cubs are on top of the Phillies, 5-2 in the sixth inning. Last night in Pittsburgh, the Pirates and the Mets battling in the NLE's fifth inning. Trailing 1-0, Sid Breen connects. Send Ron Darling's pitch deep to right. It's gone, and we're tied at one. To the seventh, New York's Keith Hernandez. In his first game back from the disabled list, takes care of business. The ball clears the right field fence and more. It's gone. Goodbye. A two-run shot, 3-1 Mets. Randy Myers came in to pick up his 17th save and watch the final out of the game. Some guy who has had a few too many beers sticks his own glove out to interfere with Wally Backman. It's over the Mets over the Pirates, 3-2. The first place wings are in Richmond tonight. Rochester hopes to pat his lead in the Western Division by sending Mike Griffin to the mound against the Braves. The wings took last night's game 5-4 on Craig Worthington's three-run homer. We'll have this evening's results from the Diamond on night beat. The 6th annual Eddie Meath All-Star Football Game is set this evening at Fauver Stadium. The opening kickoff will be at 8 o'clock. Syracuse football coach Dick McPherson spoke to the players last night at the banquet and hit home when he talked about Canandaigua's Billy Shar battling for the Orangemen's quarterback spot. That uh, the pressure is on. Uh, he's been a great competitor. I think that he's a Division I quarterback. I think we're going to need both he and Phil Cox. Uh, we need to, to make sure we have some backup support. Now let's see who wins. And I think everybody in Rochester knows, as uh, Billy and Todd knows, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's equal, we're going to go with the young guy because we don't want to break another guy in next year. Each of them has big shoes to fill in Donnie McPherson's spot. And McPherson, by the way, will quarterback the second half of tonight's exhibition game for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's only fitting that Pat Bradley is tied for the lead at the LPGA's Pat Bradley International in North Carolina. Pat, Jody Rosenthal, and Dot Jermaine are all at 15 points in the Stableford scoring system. This is Joan Delk with a putt for birdie on number 18. It's worth three points and gives her five for the tourney. To 14, Julie Inkster leaves her birdie putt just short of the cup and had to settle for a par. No points to remain at 11. And to the hostess, Pat Bradley on 16. She nails this birdie for three and 15 points total. The top 18 will play tomorrow. Jody Mudd leads the PGA St. Jude's Classic. After today's third round, he's at 13 under par. One stroke ahead of Tim Simpson at 12 under. Dave Rebels is in third place at 11 under par. And Rochester's Jeff Sluman carded at 70 today, and he stands at 6 under par for the tourney. The Summer Olympic Games are less than a month away, and as Harry Holiday, or Harv Holiday reports, the U.S. women's basketball team plans to keep practicing hard until the torch is lit in Seoul. The U.S. women's Olympic basketball team is doing some high-altitude training this week at the Air Force Academy. And head coach Kay Yao has been running the women ragged in the two-a-day drills. That's one of our goals. One of the must be in top physical condition. We must be in as good a shape or better shape than any other team in the world. The U.S. is still the dominant country in the world for basketball, but other countries are now narrowing the gap. And the conditioning to maintain a full-court transition game, well, that could produce another goal for this country. I think this team has a lot of quickness and a lot of talent. I think this could definitely dominate the rest of the world and could easily win the, the gold medal, con considering we play well together and just really have that common goal in mind as a team. One of the mainstays on this team is 6'8", Ann Donovan. She has had a hand in the 84 gold medal, the 86 world championship, and the Pan Am title in 87. Is there a lot of pressure on because of the last goal? I think so. I think not only the gold in Los Angeles, but our tremendous summer in 86, where we beat the Soviets twice. I think that puts a lot of pressure on us to keep up that level. There are 16 players in this camp, so Coach Yao will have to make four more cuts before the final squad of 12 makes the trip to Seoul early next month. In Colorado Springs, this is Harv Holiday for NBC News. And here are today's results from Finger Lakes. The early double of E&A was worth $53, and the late double of A&D came in for $129.20. A couple other notes, the Empire State Games are wrapping up. Some of the events are finishing today, some will finish tomorrow. We'll have highlights of today's events at 11.30 following Night Beat, right here on Channel 8, and at ch or 7 o'clock also on Channel 8, which is where we are, 
they're, they're premiere of the WWF Wrestling Challenge, and I can hardly wait. I'm going <laughs> to skip dinner and watch this sucker. But that's the thing. Empire State Games, Western Region is doing very well, as usual. And, and, and you believe that, that stuff, right? The wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> that's all legit. Of course it's legit, right? Okay. The LPGA, Pat Bradley, they're using a different kind the of a scoring system. The scoring system, you get points for birdies and eagles, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of points. If you par the hole, you're at no points for the uh, accumulative score. If you bogey, of course, you lose points, and that's it. And we'll have the final round tomorrow. Okay, fine. Still to come on News 8, Dwayne Brozak and a look at the movie Die Hard. We'll find out whether it'll live or die hard. And the pictures of the week. This Olympic Viewer's Guide is brought to you by City Mattress, your betting experts. The Serpentine is a series of traverses to either side of the center line. These are performed in the cantering gait. As the rider shifts weight slightly to the side, the horse changes the leg or lead to that side. The leg must cross over. The head is turned in the direction of the traverse, and the horse's flanks are always parallel to the side of the arena. If you don't start flocking the city mattress, I'm going to lose my job. He's kidding. We'd never fire him. Sales get any lower, we're out of business. Shoney, you know sales are great. My house is a shambles. It's home. I can't afford bus fare to work. Two cars. I'm desperate. I'll even deliver the mattress myself. Sure, he's never even picked one up. Tell you what I'm going to do. Come to City Mattress right now and I'll give you a mattress free. Shoney. Okay. During our summer clearance, come and save 10 to 50% on everything you need to sleep. Max Pies will open special hours tomorrow, noon till 5, for our August carpet sale. This is a store-wide sale, with up to 70% off the largest carpet inventory in the East. Including DuPont certified Stainmaster carpets. $39 carpets on sale for only $8.99. With six months to pay, interest-free. We'll even install your carpet at no extra charge. Remnants are reduced another 10% off already low prices. That's tomorrow, noon till 5 only, at Max Pies. Come on, down, down, family restaurant down, 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 where everything down, is homemade. Come on, family restaurant down, 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 where everything is homemade. Great food, great fun. Come try Rochester's hottest family restaurant, Carmine's. Come on, down, down, come in, down, down, where everything down, 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 is homemade. Carmine's, 3070 West Henrietta Road. We get a lot of good things to eat out of the Atlantic Ocean, and in spite of all the medical waste and garbage that's washing up on New York City area beaches, it's still safe to eat it. In a joint statement, Health Commissioner David Axelrod and DEC Chief Thomas Jorling said there is no reason to suspect that fish, lobsters, or crabs have been made unsafe by that stuff. Ali North's hometown is saying phooey. Last year, they held the first annual Ali North Day in Philmont, New York. About 2,000 people lined the streets, waving signs, supporting the Iran-Contra figure. Only Ollie never showed up. Now the mayor says, oh, Ollie's apparently forgotten his hometown, so they put the squash on plans for a second annual Ollie North Day. He's gone from moonlighting to wine cooler commercials, and now Bruce Willis is making a big splash on the big screen. Here's Dwayne Brozek with his review of Willis's latest, Die Hard. If this is an emergency call, dial 911 on your telephone. Otherwise, I'll have to report this as an FCC violation. Fine. Report me. Come the f down here and arrest me. Just send the police now. That's just a sample of the edge of your seat excitement from the smash summer movie hit Die Hard. Bruce Willis's best big screen effort to date. Willis plays an off-duty New York cop who winds up in the middle of a hostage situation in a Los Angeles high-rise. He's no hero, but he is the only one who can stop the terrorists. You are most troublesome for a security guard. Sorry, Hans, wrong guess. Would you like to go for double jeopardy where the scores can really change? Who are you, then? Just the fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench, the pain in the ass. Even if you're not a Bruce Willis fan, you'll enjoy him in this role. There are flashes of his wisecracking moonlighting persona, 
But overall, he gives a performance that's more thoughtful and sensitive than you'd expect. Tell her that, um, that she's the best thing that ever happened to a bum like me. She's heard me say I love you a thousand times. She never heard me say I'm sorry. And Willis is surrounded by a solid supporting cast, which gives the film that much more depth. Add to this an intriguing script, and you've got one of the best action films to come along in a long time. On a scale of one to eight, I'll give Die Hard a seven. Dwayne Brozak, News 8. And we'll see you again tonight at 11 o'clock. We close now with the pictures of the week. wants to do something like this that affects so many lives, I don't have the answer. The commission, in the final analysis, holds Mayor Thomas Ryan and the city council accountable for the murder of Calvin Green. President Reagan is proving to be Bush's best campaigner, and Dukakis fends off the attack. This is NBC Nightly News, reported by Connie Chung. Good evening. President Reagan is running against Michael Dukakis as hard as George Bush is, hardly letting a day pass to attack the Democrats. Today it was national defense, increasingly the theme of the Bush campaign, and the president was spearheading the effort. NBC News White House correspondent Jim Miklaszewski has details. President Reagan let fly today with a political salvo on defense, aimed at the Democrats and presumably Michael Dukakis. In his weekly radio address, the president warned Democrats not to hold the defense budget political hostage. What could be more deplorable than to use the defense of this nation as a political pawn? It won't happen, not if I have anything to say about it. But the Democrats charge it's Mr. Reagan who's playing politics, with his veto of the $300 billion defense budget approved by Congress. The president says he vetoed the bill because it cut too much from strategic programs like Star Wars and the MX missile, which he says would handcuff any president in future arms talks with the Soviets. Defense Secretary Frank Carlucci and National Security Advisor Colin Powell had favored the bill. Still, Mr. Reagan denies his veto was driven by politics. But his chief of staff wasn't nearly as convincing today. The president decided it on policy grounds. Sometimes good policy is also good politics. In the presidential race, Republicans attack Michael Dukakis as being weak on defense, while George Bush rides the crest of the Reagan legacy. More than a trillion dollars spent on defense. A record...